Well, good morning people. How are you all diddling? It's an early one today. I'm having difficulty sleeping. So we're up at half one. No idea why. Well, I do have an idea why. So I'm having difficulty sleeping. Anyway, I decided to try and come out for a walk. My last video's been quite a while ago. Where I didn't manage to do my falling fossil walk properly. And it crippled me. I've had a lot of problems since then. And prior to then as well. So this video is, yes it's a walk video, but it's predominantly going to be an update video. And if I'm honest, a bit of a bloody moan. So without further ado, let's crack on with it. an early start. I think I got out for about quarter to five. Have to get out earlier than that. Well it was still dark so I could get here for sunrise. But I procrastinated as I quite often do. Obviously this is called the cinder track so therefore there's the crunching of cinder beneath my feet. But I might leave um, a lot of them, a lot of the talking I want to do when I'm off the cinder track or parts where it's more mud, dirt rather than cinder. I'll see you when I'm able to give you an update. There's a fox walking across the field just over there. I don't often see foxes stalking these fields. What they're doing is they're trying to catch the crows and the jackdaws and the magpies that are all feeding in the field. And what have I seen today? Well, so far, I've seen a beautiful barn owl as we're driving here. Glided across the road and then flew alongside me. So a couple of hairs down there. As soon as I went to turn the camera on, the scabbard, I was seeing the fox. Numerous birds. A little bit of a sweat on. Thank you for Michelle for recommending these. Um, invaluable. And with all crows kicking off up there, I think that's where the fox is. Fox 
foxes are smart cunning animals. They're not breeding season of birds, well of, of all the prey. And you know this time of year there's a lot of young crows and magpies and stuff that are still aren't quite aware of the surroundings or don't quite have the ability to fly off at speed. So the foxes know that they are pretty easy targets compared to an adult bird. Back onto the crunchy gravel. Sure, I've just seen a buzzard back there. Well, definitely like a buzzard. Might have been a young one. Might like coloration and its shape and the way that it flew when it saw me. It was only 40 foot away from me, perched in a tree. And as I came into view, it had that, because there's no wind, it had that lumbering great wingspan. Um, trying to create lift. Almost definitely looked like a buzzard. Not almost definitely, it definitely did look like a buzzard. So I'm going to count it as a buzzard. Seen some more hares, loads of little robins and nut hatches, tree creepers, wrens. Oh, flitting onto the path and back again, scurrying up the trees like, like tree creepers do, like little mice <laughs> that hop. <laughs> anyway, path's pretty quiet here. So it's time for an update on me. Now you might want to skip forward or turn it off. So I'm going to have a right whinge. As you know, I've had this trap nerve thing in my neck. Neck up a spine. Actually not in my neck, it's just above my shoulder blades in my spine. And it causes hell of a lot of pain. This time it was triggered by me wiping my head on my sleeves on that last walk that I did with Michelle. Which incidentally was this walk. Don't know how long ago that was. Seized off a bit now. But it got to a point where if I turned my head or I sat funny or moved my head funny effect all side of my face, my ear, shooty veins in my temple and straight up back of my skull. I know it was that because if I corrected my piss position it went away. So I started wearing a neck brace which helped a lot when I were at home. Anyway because right, my two teeth here because they were pretty bad. My well, little chipped and cracked because it was causing all this nerve pain up here it were increasing the toothache in them exponentially and it was just it was absolute agony so i went to the dentist and he emergency dentist to go all the way to bloody hull and he pulled them two teeth out this top one i'm still having a lot of trouble with because there's something sharp on the outer side of the gum I think he's left a shard of tooth in there. And my gum's trying to heal around it. With a little bit sticking out. I'm going to sit down while I talk. Yes, I'm sweating excessively. Ugh. More than normal. That's going to be... My next topic, and why I'm sweating excessively. Oh. I did want to do the maybe a little bit well, little bit walk, but because of all heat we've had, I knew that under that canopy, 
still going to be like a greenhouse. It's bad enough here and I'm on coast. When I'm out at trees there's a lovely little breeze. Under here, it's just like <coughs> really close. Where were I? Yeah, sharp tooth. So I've got all this content to contend with. I can't remember what it is. The, the sweating thing. Last weekend, <coughs> if, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I have I've had this permanent bladder infection for eight, ten years or something stupid. And I'm on prostate medication and antibiotics, and I've been on the same ones for these past eight, ten years or whatever. I think it's eight years. Because I have a permanent restriction in my bladder, in my bladder neck, that stops me being able to empty it properly. If you can't empty your bladder properly, then it festers and gets infected. And I do have the occasional flare-ups. Usually three, four times a year, but they're usually not bad. The last couple of days, I double dose on my antibiotics. And it goes away. Then I do about another three or four times a year, get another flare-up. But that's stupidity, really. That's me forgetting to take my medication on the morning. And by mid-afternoon, I haven't remembered to take them. It starts festering. And well, I get a lot of pain and everything else. Usually at this point I remember, so shit, did I take my tablets? So I'll go check. And no, I haven't, so I'll take them. Anyway, last weekend it was tea time-ish and I started feeling a bit iffy. Anyway, I got a bit of a temperature and all my down my back of my arms started shaking uncontrollably. Got shivers. I sweated, started sweating profusely because my temperature skyrocketed. So I'll Bugger, I forgot my tablets. I went to check and no, I'd not forgotten them. So I thought, right, another flare up. I'll double dose my tablets and it'll sort it out. Next day, it was worse. I got to a point where I had a temperature of 103. I was just sweating buckets but shivering like hell. Oh, look, a little robin. Hello. Got no food for you. Anyway, um, yeah, shivering like hell. And when I don't know if you've ever had bladder infections. When you get bladder infections, your whole your whole pelvis just aches and aches and aches and all down your legs. It's like a, a really deep bone ache. Like a, it's hard to describe. It's a deep bone ache, and it affects all your pelvis and all your legs. So I couldn't sit down. I, I, could I hardly walk, my head would, were all over the place. Because when you've got infection and the temperature and stuff, you, it just, you get dizzy and you, you lose your balance, you can't focus and, and it's not nice. Not, you know, when, when you get to temperatures of 100, abo 100 and above, you know, it's starting getting bad. So I double dosed my um, antibiotics again. Didn't get any better. By this point, I was having lots and lots of difficulty having a wee. Tuesday morning, I was doubled up in pain. I got an emergency appointment at the doctor's. By this point, I couldn't wee at all. Well, trickle. And my blood was getting pretty full. He sent me straight down to the hospital. Um, and surprisingly, I got seen within 20 minutes, um, which I was shocked about. This was, this was late Tuesday. Walked in door, told them my name, sat down, 20 minutes later, the doctor called me, talked to me, examined me, um, says, right, we need to put a catheter in. I'm not, new, I'm, I'm, I'm not new to catheters. Usually once a year, I have to have one in, maybe once every two years. So I'm not new to them. So, yeah, all right catheter. Put catheter in. Obviously I don't need a bag so I've just got a tap on it. Hello. Hello. I've got another little friend. A little young Robin. Yeah. Hello. 
Um, yes, I'm not new to them. Uh, they put catheter in and oh, the instant relief. They put it in it and my bladder just emptied, it gushed. It's extremely painful putting catheters in for me. Yes, they do squirt a little bit of antiseptic, uh, anaesthetic down your penis. But because I've got this restriction in the neck of my bladder, I find it really hard to get the tube through that. So that is extremely painful. But once they're through, it's fine. But yeah, they, they struggled to get it through, but they did. It was pretty much instant relief because my blood had just emptied. Um, it stunk the room out. <laughs> you know, there's hell of a lot of wee and it stunk the room out because it had been sat in my bladder festering and all sorts of bacteria and shite in it. Very dark as well. Uh, and they gave me talk about keeping it clean and tap and secure and everything else. But, but I know all that anyway. So yeah, so now I've pissed through a tube. Got a little tap on it. Just when my bladder feels like I need a wee, I just go turn it on. It empties. Give it a shake. Give it a wipe. Turn it off. Job done. You know, because I've I, I have the sensation of needing a wee. I don't need a bag, you know. Yeah, you know, that's a whole different thing, is that when you don't have the sensation of needing a wee. So yeah, anyway, they gave me some really strong antibiotics. Yesterday, what best I felt. I feel so much better today. I've still got a bit of a temperature, hence the excessive sweating. Um, but it's clearing up nicely. And usually, when I've had a catheter in, I'm okay for a fair few weeks because the catheter actually stretches this restriction and once I pull that out, well once I pull that out because I'm allowed to take it out myself um, it stretches that restriction and I can pee freely well, not freely but way better than before, obviously. So I'm hoping I can check it out tonight. My pee's nice and clear. Temperature's going down. There's no real sign of the infection in my in my urine anymore. I dropped off another wee sample last night. And if that comes back okay, then touch wood, I can take my catheter out tonight. So that's me update. It's not been good. It's just been one thing on top of another, on top of another. I've been in so much pain with this trapped nerve and bladder infection and the pain and in my pelvis and legs and neck and my face and my teeth and... <sighs> Sometimes I wish doctors could either tell you exactly what's wrong and sort it or just say, look, you passed that point send you to hospital and just put a bullet in your head does it just it never ending and it just gets on top of you anyway this is getting the work done so I'm gonna crack on Ah, uh, this is Herbal White Pub. Which you've all seen. Like winter, and the colder months, autumn. Because it's cool and, and I don't sweat. Because without the whole temperature thing, um, I do sweat a lot anyway. I do like this time of year when everything's in full leaf and overgrown and magical. Like I've said before, this is start a trail that goes down to waterfalls.
even though I'm under canopy again, it's all closed. Because this is a valley that goes straight down to waterfalls. It's rather cool in here. It's lovely. And it's perfect. Speaking of waterfalls, as you know, I normally go down there. But all the way down to waterfalls. And I come all the way back up. But because I'm still pretty weak and my pelvis and hips are still a bit I'm not gonna go down because I don't want to come all the way back up again. It'd be nice to sit down there on rocks and enjoy the sea. But I'm not gonna I'm going straight up onto the cliff top. Oh. I'll see you at the top. Well, that's the first view of the sea. Apart from one of that guy. I didn't stop to look at the sea there. Let's go back a bit and let you see the coastline. I brought my extended selfie stick. Well, this time because I've slackened it off. Might be able to use it. I'll soon find out. As long as I've got no trees above me, I'm going to have a go with it. Well, once I find a decent bit of cliff edge to go out over, like having a drone. I'll show you what this looks like. This is fully extended without any zoom in or out. <sighs> there, like that. And above me at arm's length. Now we're above me at arm's length. And when I get to a decent point, I'll put the camera on that stick, the other stick, do the same again, and you can see the difference. Right, so this is going to be fully extended arm length. Leave it on the stick now. It's not something you can just do at the spur of a moment. You've got to plan it because it's a bit of a faff unlocking it and then locking it so it doesn't fall down on itself also because of the length you get bounce in the stick so you have to have the camera that way which then affects the the join in the two lenses if you have it that way, you'll see the bend. And I've just realised the collars 
actually screw into each other which I didn't realise before I thought of like a, a normal twist lock it's not it's a threaded twist lock which makes things damn sight easier <sighs> don't we live in a stunning country absolutely beautiful that very light breeze is very welcome as well it once sun pokes through those clouds properly I think it's gonna be a bloody scorcher percent left. I've got a couple of spare ones so I'll put a new battery in. Uh, yeah do you know I'm really enjoying this walk and I'm I'm hardly in any pain at all and I thought it would have hurt a lot more than it than it isn't. <laughs> I think if I'd have gone down to Haven White Waterfall then back up I think that would have that would have done me in. I mean, this is a very easy walk anyway, it's all relatively flat, apart from those few steps back there and then there's a few over this way, but it's predominantly flat. So yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at how much I am enjoying it, I thought it was going to be a chore, I thought it would be a task, especially given the fact that I've got catheter in and it's strapped to my leg, and but that's not pulling at all, I've got that just nice. Yeah, I'm going to turn you off now and swap batteries. So we'll see you in a bit. Right, that's battery changed. Just had a nice carrot cake bar and a drink of juice. Didn't bring any tea today, so I want to keep my bag light due to this pain in the neck. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I posted a video. I just haven't done any filming because I've been in a bit, bit of a bad way. I've just had no desire to do any filming. I could have quite easily filmed updates at home, but like I said, I've just no desire to make any films at all. Anyway, I'm out today. I've enjoyed it. I haven't finished. I'm only two thirds of the way around. And hopefully, I'm going to start getting out of it more so I can make some films for you. I know I don't have many subscribers and you know the reason why I'm not right bothered because I do it for me but if you are new to the channel um, do click a like and click subscribe and click the little bell so you can get notifications for when I upload new stuff I have got a new toy if you remember there's a couple of videos on the remarkable remarkable because I bought the remarkable eating tablet thing didn't have it long didn't get on with it 
um, it was crap at ebooks and PDFs. It, it, it just didn't work. Great if that's what you wanted it for. You know, if you're going to do a lot of writing, if you're an artist and you want to do some drawing, a little bit of reading, then great. But way overpriced. And I just, it just wasn't for me. Anyway, my dad broke his Kindle. He had a Kindle Fire and he read his ebooks on that. But he broke it. And I've had a Kindle Paper White for years. So I wiped it and reset it and I gave my dad my Kindle paper white so I was in, I, I was gonna get the new Kindle paper white deluxe or whatever it is and I thought st all I can still do with it is just read Kindle books you can do PDS but there's no zoom feature out and you know it is just a Kindle reader so I did a lot of research because I've had time, because I've not been able to get out or do anything. And after weeks and weeks of research, I decided on the Kobo Ellipsa. Uh, it comes as a package. You get the Kobo Ellipsa, you get the pen, and you get a cover. Ordered on Monday, obviously through Clearpace, where I can pay in over four payments. Uh, 350 quid, I think it was. Ordered it Monday, came first thing Wednesday morning. Didn't expect that all. It said seven to ten days, but yeah, it... Or did it Monday? Or did it Monday lunchtime actually? Just after lunch. And it came first thing Wednesday morning. Bloody amazing. I've start I've created the thing about the ellipse is that yes, it's primarily an ebook and Cobo, Cobo do e-readers brilliantly. Yeah, you know, they've been at it a very, very long time. So they know how to do it. But this is their very first ten point two inch large format device. And it's also their, their very first um, writing tablet of that size. Now, I've, I've read a couple of books already, and it is absolutely fantastic for reading ebooks. The handwriting recognition is phenomenal. Even my horrible scroll, uh, it recognises it, and it translates it almost perfectly. 99%, a few tweaks. Um, yeah, and you can use it for journaling or taking notes. On all the ebooks and the PDFs, you can write on them. So you're reading an ebook, you can highlight it or you can write it or circle it or just put notes in margin. It's so much simpler than the Remarkable. And it does what I hoped the Remarkable could do, but didn't. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Even if I just use it as an as an ebook, and I don't really create my own handwritten books in it or notes. I mean, I will use it for notes, and I'll do it use it for to-do lists and st you know stuff like that. I will do that, but even if I just do that and use it as an ebook, I'd say it's pretty much the best ebook I've ever had. And being ten point two inches, it's just it's great. <laughs> I, I I can't praise it enough. Um, it's still in it in its infancy, software-wise, so I am expecting some good changes to come along on in the software updates but yeah really really happy with it so i'm going to call it remarkable ellipsa now well, that's, that's just advertising for remarkable who oh, do a device yes it's brilliant the form factors sublime it's well made well proportioned light thin and it does a lot of things but none of them well but the cobo ellipsa just Two main things. It's a writing tablet and it's an ebook. And it does them both brilliantly. So, yes, that's my new toy. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to have another five minutes, drink some more juice, um, and then crack on with walk. So, speak to you in a bit. <laughs> Thank you.
well, just about back to the car. Yeah, it is just a lane eight bench. Now I'm gonna stop at that bench and have a break and a breather. Let the body calm down a little bit. And rehydrate. Beautiful, isn't it? No idea what time it is, but there's some heat in that sun now, even though it's partially obscured by high cloud. Uh, just as I sat down. Just there. A lizard. Given habitat, I'd say a common lizard. It scuttled off. A shadow went over it. Anyway, oh, it's been a lovely walk. It's getting a bit warm for me now. Bird singing, sound of waves, slight breeze. Oh, it's stunning. Beautiful. Sublime. Anyway, still looking for that lizard. Anyway, I'm calling that it for now. I've got some change in my pocket because my intention is to go to car wash way back and give me care of good clean because it's absolutely filthy and I don't know whether it's because it's red but birds love shitting on my car is that a thing do birds prefer red cars to shit on there's no lines above it it's about four foot away from my house it gets blathered you know I'll wash it on my own give it a good clean and when I go out crack a dawn tomorrow to go through the leads It'll be shit on two or three times again. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed it. I'm knackered now because that last section there, there's just a few ups and downs. Pelvis on the legs, not 100% yet. Yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad I'm able to film it and upload it for you guys to see. Yes, I know I did a lot of moaning when I stopped. So yeah, apologies about that. So with that said, um, yeah, once again, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. And until next time, be safe, be strong, and I'll catch you all later. Bye for now. Shit.